All right, guys, in this chapter, we're going to be covering anaphylactic reactions. In this chapter, we're going to review what exactly an allergic reaction is, as well as go over what an anaphylactic reaction is. How do we assess a patient that's having that's going having an allergic or anaphylactic reaction, as well as how do we assess and care, as well as what epinephrine is. Now, an allergic reaction is a hypersensitivity reaction that has resulted from the patient's exposure to some type of allergen, which can occur at any time and to any one. There's a wide variety of substances can, that can produce such reactions. Food, medications, insect stinks, and even exercise are common causes. An allergic reaction can be mild, um, where you have localized reaction presenting at redness, itching skin, or pruritus, and edema or they can have a mild systemic reaction resulting in widespread hives or urticaria and pruritus. In its most severe form, an allergic reaction can cause a systemic, multi-system, life-threatening condition that presents with respiratory failure, circulatory collapse, and shock. This severe reaction is known as an anaphylactic reaction and also known as anaphylaxis. An anaphylactic reaction is a severe, exaggerated systemic allergic reaction that is associated with severe swelling of the upper and lower airways, constriction of the bronchioles, leakage of fluid from the capillaries, systemic vessel dilation, and an increased produ production of mucus. An anaphylactic reaction can be so severe that the upper airway closes. Respirations become labored because of high airway resistance from swollen and constricted bronchioles and blood pressure becoming dangerously low because of dilation of the vessels and leakage of fluid from the capillaries. Delay in emergency care can easily and rapidly lead to deterioration in the patient's condition and even to death. During this lesson, you will learn about assessing and treating patients suffering from an allergic reaction. Now, when a patient is exposed to any foreign substance, this is what's called an antigen. Now, allergens are a type of antigen that provokes a certain type of reaction within the body. Now, the response of the immune system can, uh, upon exposure to the antigen, is to produce antibodies. Now, this response usually occurs with little to no allergic reaction. This is a normal reaction when somebody's exposed to something for the first time. Excuse me. Now, when they produce um, IgE, this is what's triggering that immune system response, that abnormal reaction of the immune system to a foreign substance. The reaction can range from mild to life-threatening. The chemicals that are released because of anaphylaxis is what results in the swelling of the airway, the bronchoconstriction, and poor perfusion. Anaphylaxis requires a prior exposure to the antigen, such as peanut dust. An anaphylactoid reaction is similar, but does not require pen prior pen sensitization to the substance. Penicillin, bee venom, Nuts and berries are common causes of anaphylaxis. Uh, IVP dye, which is one of the, one of the, the what they use for IV contrast, is a common suspect for anaphylactoid reactions. Now, an antigen can enter the body through multiple different ways. It can enter through the skin, the gastrointestinal tract, or the respiratory tract. When it does, it sets off a response in which the immune system detects the antigen and produces antibodies. Now these antibodies are proteins that search for the antigen, combines with it, and helps to destroy it. Now when, they have, when the patient does have the reaction, it is because the reaction has become misdirected and there's been an excessive uh, response by the immune system to the allergen. The allergen is usually harmless to the patient, ultimately, and most allergic reactions are mild, producing nothing more than just discomfort, such as itching, runny nose, and watery eyes, because of, which is a result of the body's attempt to eliminate the allergen or antigen. 
Now once sensitization occurs, the patient is primed for a possible anaphylactic reaction. Now it can take several exposures to a for foreign substance over a long period to become sensitized. That's why uh, with medications, for example, a patient can be on a medication for a long period of time before they have an anaphylactic reaction. Now, at once the sensitization has occurred, those IgE bodies, antibodies, attach to two types of immune cells. You have mast cells, which are cells that are located within the tissues, and then your basophils are within the blood. Once an antigen is reintroduced into the body, it attaches to the IgE antibodies that are now located with either within the mast cells or basophils. Granules located inside the mast cells and basophils attach to the cell membrane allowing them to release their contents, which are then chemical substances known as chemical mediators, into the interstitial fluid. Once they are outside of the cell membrane and within the interstitial fluid, these chemical mediators can be picked up by the capillaries and transported by the blood throughout the body. The primary chemical mediator released from mast cells and bas basophils is histamine. Histamine causes bronchoconstriction, vasodilation, and an increase in capillary permeability, or leakage. After the chemical mediators are released, the mast cells and basophils regenerate the granules inside the cell membrane, priming them for another allergic or anaphylactic reaction. The life-threatening responses that are directly produced from the release of the chemical mediators are bronchoconstriction, an increase in capillary permeability, and vasodilation. These produce most of the signs and symptoms seen in anaphylaxis. In some reactions, the chemical mediators can be released from the mast cells and basophils the first time the antigen is introduced into the body, without the patient ever being sensitized. The antigen causes the release of the chemical mediators, or the histamine. This reaction, in which no sensitization is required, is referred to as an anaphylactoid reaction, or a non-IgE mediated reaction. The body's responses and the signs and symptoms are the exact same as for an IgE-mediated anaphylactic reaction, thus the treatment is the same. Now, as I said, the, body can enter, the allergens can enter the body through a multiple of different ways, such as injection, such as through needles, infusions, bites, and stings, ingestion where the patient has swallowed the substance inhalation where they've breathed it in through the, into their lungs, and contact where the antigen is absorbed through the skin. Injection, especially intramuscular IV injection, is the route most often associated with anaphylactic reactions. Penicillin is the most common medication that causes uh, anaphylactic reactions as well. Now there are multiple different uh, causes of allergens or common types of allergens, um, such as you know insect bites, um, venom, food, pollen. Um, pollen is a big one around here, definitely in our area of the country. Um, medications, um, glue, hair dye, uh, henna tattoos, um, transfused blood can even cause. Uh, anaphylactic reactions in some people. Um, exercise can accentuate the anaphylactic response when certain foods have been ingested close to the time of exercise. This con condition is most common in dedicated athletes such as joggers, but rarely also occurs from physical activities such as raking leaves or dancing. Um, weather conditions such as including heat, cold, and humidity can trigger an anaphylactic reaction. And latex is most often found in exam gloves and other medical devices, so that can cause it also. Uh, table 21.1 goes up is some common causes of an anaphylactic reaction or anaphylactic, just a little bit more of what we just went over, as well as the, uh, um, examples of it, so like antibiotics, penicillin, vancomycin, Bactrim, uh, local anesthetics such as lidocaine or uh, novocaine. Opiates would be your pain medication. Uh, steroids such as methylprednisolone, uh, vitamins, ACE inhibitors, 
food, blood, uh, aspirin can be, uh, be an example. Uh, the radiographic iodine-based dyes would be that IVP dye. Red dye additives, uh, marine life stings, mammal bites, and then idiopathic are those uh, anaphylactic reactions due to an unknown reason. During your scene size up, you must be certain that your own safety is not in jeopardy, especially if the anaphylactic reaction is the result of a bite or sting. You might encounter a patient who disrupted a yellow jacket or wasp nest and was stung several times. The yellow jackets or wasps could still be on scene and will attack you once you exit the ambulance, thus exposing you to the risk of an anaphylactic reaction from the stings. If you detect the presence of many wasps or yellow jackets, you might have to wait until they settle or disperse before approaching the patient. Because so many substances can cause an anaphylactic reaction, the scene size up may not provide any obvious clues as to the nature of the illness. Make sure that you assess your patient closely for any signs of an airway obstruction, or impaired ventilation, or poor perfusion. Patients with a history of anaphylaxis may also have a prescribed epi epinephrine auto-injector with them. Epinephrine, which we'll cover later, also helps the patient with anaphylaxis by causing vasoconstriction, bronchodilation, and cardi improving cardiac output. In gathering your general impression of a patient with an anaphylactic reaction, you might note that he complains of not feeling well or of a malaise or a generalized feeling of weakness or discomfort. Such a patient can display a sense of impending doom. He may also complain of difficulty swallowing or itching or tightness in his throat. The patient's mental status can be anywhere on the continuum from responsive and alert to responsive but disoriented to completely unresponsive. Closely assess the airway for signs of obstruction. Strider, hoarseness, or crowing sounds indicate significant swelling to the upper airway. Inserting an, or an airway adjunct might not help relieve the obstruction if the swelling is at the level of the larynx. You might also find a swollen tongue that interferes with the airway. It might also be necessary to provide positive pressure ventilation to force the air past the swollen upper airway. You might also find a swollen tongue that interferes with the airway. Wheezing can be prominent upon assessment or breathing. If a patient is severely disoriented, unresponsive, or breathing inadequately, immediately begin positive pressure ventilation with supplemental oxygen. If their breathing is adequate, provide supplemental oxygen if any signs of respiratory distress, poor perfusion, hypoxemia, or hypoxia are present, and maintain an O2 sat at or above 94%. Pulse on a patient suffering from an anaphylactic reaction may be weak and rapid. The radial pulse may not be present because of low blood pressure. Edema or swelling may, can, may be obvious in the face, neck, lips, tongue, hands, and feet. The skin can be red and warm, or the patient's skin can be cyanotic from inadequate breathing. You may also notice hives, raised red blotches all over the skin. In this patient, they are suffering from swelling of the tongue. So this one would be pretty hard to maintain their airway. Hives. The hives and itching are hallmark signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. So always be looking close for this. Uh, some of the other noticeable signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, which are nonspecific, may include rhinitis, or is that stuffy nose, um, tachycardia, faintness or lightheadedness. Other signs and symptoms may include warm flushed skin uh, or it may be pale. The patient may be agitated, um, edema of the skin. Um, if they have ede edema of the lips or tongue, this is known as angioedema or angioneurotic edema. Because of the potential seriousness of an anaphylactic reaction and its effects on the airway, lungs, blood vessels, and heart, the patient is considered a priority and should be prepared for immediate transport. Before leaving the scene, determine whether the patient has a prescribed epinephrine auto-injector. Um, if the patient is unresponsive, ask relatives or any bystanders that are nearby. 
Table 21-3 goes over some signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis as well as the pathophysiology behind it. Um, I would recommend looking over this so that we have an idea of what exactly is causing the symptoms within your patient. As you approach your secondary assessment, this should be conducted whether the patient's signs and symptoms are included, indicate a mild, moderate, or severe allergic reaction. However, if the patient is exhibiting signs of severe reaction, do not delay transport of the patient um, to complete the secondary assessment. Go ahead and load them up and initiate your transport. Um, if you're able to, go through your OPQRST, um, go through your signs and symptoms. That, you know, are, are these consistent with anaphylaxis? Um, what symptoms are they presenting with and are they getting any better or worse? Um, does the patient do, does the patient have a history of allergies to anything? Um, have they been have they been exposed to anything new? Um, what medications are they taking? Any new medications? Have they had an uh, anaphylactic reaction in the past? Um, and if so, how severe was it? Because this can kind of give you a heads up as to what to expect. Um, go through determine the you know when was the last time they had anything to eat or drink. Um, what were they doing prior to the onset of the symptoms? Were they exposed to anything that may have caused an allergic reaction? And if so, what kind of ex uh, what route were they exposed by? Go through your skin, um, assess for warmness or tingling feeling, um, itching, hives. Look at your respiratory system. Is the patient complaining of a lump in their throat, uh, cough, tachypnea, uh, difficulty breathing? Um, do they have any tachycardia, hypotension? Um, are they uh, disoriented, lightheaded, um, unresponsive? Is there any seizure activity? Go through your GI system. Do you notice any nausea or vomiting, diarrhea? Uh, do they have any cramping of the uterus? Or uh, your generalized signs and symptoms would be the itchy, watery eyes, uh, general weakness, runny nose. Get your baseline vitals. You want to pay close attention to their breathing, bolts, and blood pressure. Uh, respiratory rate can be beyond the, early, the normal limits. Uh, early in an anaphylactic reaction, you might find that the respiratory rate is fast and labored. Uh, as the condition progresses and the patient begins to tire, uh, the breathing can become slower than normal and shallow. Uh, wheezes can be heard without a stethoscope. Uh, the breathing can also sound noisy uh, with a rattling sound on inspiration and exhalation from the excessive mucus in the larger lower airways. Their pulse will be rapid and can be weak. In severe cases of anaphylaxis, the radial pulse may be absent or extremely weak. Uh, unlike other types of shock, the skin is usually red, dry, and warm to the touch. Uh, you may have hives and itching. These, remember, these are the most common complaints in all types of allergic reactions. Uh, if you do have, if your patient is hypotensive, that's a telltale sign that your patient is having a severe anaphylactic reaction. Uh, you want to try to determine whether this is a systemic or a local reaction because um, our treatment depends on this. If it's a systemic one, this is the one where we're wanting to give, uh, potentially give epinephrine um, and be very aggressive with our treatment. Um, you know, if they are having that systemic one, we may want to try to consider giving them epi. If if not, if it's just a local reaction, um, we may just give them, you know, Benadryl or something like that, uh, and monitor their signs and symptoms. Now there are two key categories of signs and symptoms that our patient might have. Uh, the local reaction typically does not require aggressive intervention um, or any administration of medications by the EMT. Uh, in a patient with a local reaction, you can maintain adequate oxygenation and transport the patient while constantly assessing for signs and symptoms of a systemic reaction. Um, epinephrine should be administered to patients with signs and symptoms uh, of a systemic reaction, especially if they present with any uh, hypotension, respiratory distress, or upper airway edema. Uh, your major concern is that the uh, mild local reaction could potentially rapidly progress to a moderate to severe anaphylactic reaction. So be prepared to manage worst case scenario. Um, as I always say, treat for the worst and hope for the best. Uh, when caring for them, also make sure that you maintain a patent airway. 
Um, with these patients, airway adjuncts may not be effective because of the swelling, and if you put it in, it may actually cause the epiglottis to slam shut. Um, also keep in mind, if you're having to ventilate for the patient, uh, positive pressure ventilation may be more difficult because of the swelling that's going on. Uh, they may also have heavy secretions, so you want to be prepared to suction them so that way you don't cause any obstruction of the airway. If they are able to oxygenate properly, um, they're ventilating good, you may place them on uh, O2 to maintain an O2 sat of 94% or greater. Um, if protocols allow, if the patient is having those systemic reactions, uh, you can consider giving that auto-injector epinephrine. Uh, consider calling for ALS early, uh, because if you can get ALS on scene, they can give IV epi if needed, as well as giving Benetrol via the IV route. Um, also, as I said, always never um, stamp, hold a transporting patient. Always initiate transport early, because uh, you can continue your assessment and any care en route to the hospital and intercept with ALS en route to the hospital. Reassessment is critical in the management of any type of allergic reaction. Uh, the patient with a local reaction should be constantly monitored for indications that they are beginning to worsen um, and require any further intervention such as epinephrine or airway control. The patient who has received an epinephrine injection should be reassessed to determine whether the injection has been effective in reversing the life-threatening condition. If you have administered epinephrine, you want to reassess the patient two minutes after post-injection and look for any improvement in the patient's mental uh, status, increasing O2 reading, and an increase in blood pressure. Um, you may also have what's called uh, biphasic anaphylactic reaction. This is a very rare occurrence. Um, in which uh, the patient's signs and symptoms will resolve, um, sometimes without treatment, if not severe, and then approximately four to six hours afterward, they have a second reaction. Uh, the signs and symptoms of the second reaction could be life-threatening, even if the first was not. Um, a severe biphasic alert anaphylactic reaction should be treated the same as an initial severe anaphylactic reaction, and re-administration of epinephrine is common and necessary if the second reaction is severe. Uh, make sure that you review and recognize um, how to recognize and treat uh, any allergic reaction, um, because being able to identify them quickly is critical to positive outcomes. All right, so epinephrine is the drug of choice for the emergency treatment of a systemic allergic reaction to insects, stings, or bites, foods, drugs, and other antigens. What this does is mimicking the response of the sympathetic nervous system. Now, y'all remember the four properties? Right, alpha 1 and 2, beta 1 and 2. Now, alpha 1, what it's doing is it's causing the vessels to constrict. Okay. Now, alpha-1, it's going to constrict and constrict as much as it can. Well, what alpha-2 is doing is regulating the amount of that vasoconstriction to where it doesn't cause the blood pressure to go, you know, 200 or something. Beta-1 increases the patient's heart rate, thus causing the contraction to become more forceful, and also is increasing the speed at which the electrical impulses are carried through the heart. So it's increasing cardiac output. Beta-2 is what's causing uh, the bronchial smooth muscles to dilate. So beta-1, because of the, vase, the increased heart rate, force of contraction, speed at which the electrical pulse, that is what's causing those side effects that we'll see. Um, three of the major responses to the chemical mediators of the body uh, uh, causing um, the life-threatening anaphylactic condition are an increase in capillary permeability, vasodilation, and bronchoconstriction inflammation. 
Epinephrine's alpha properties cause vasoconstriction and tighten the capillaries, thus reversing the vasodilation and increased capillary permeability experienced by the anaphylactic patient. The beta-2 properties cause bronchodilation, reversing the bronchoconstriction, and the beta-1 properties are responsible for side effects from administration. Also, epinephrine has a direct antihistamine effect, reducing the effects of histamine. The body's response to epinephrine is very rapid. Within seconds, the patient will begin to feel relief. However, the duration of the drug's effectiveness is short, lasting only approximately 10 to 20 minutes. Both epinephrine auto-injectors, the EpiPen, and the AviQ come in different size doses. The 0.3 mg dose of epinephrine is for patients weighing 66 pounds or greater. The injection, injector for infants and children weighing 33 pounds to 66 pounds deliver 0.15 mg of epinephrine. A child who weighs more than 60 pound, 66 pounds requires an adult epinephrine auto-injector or epinephrine dose. Epinephrine comes packaged in a disposable delivery system for self-administration. Um, so, you want to make sure you're using you're, that you're using it properly. But they're all mostly pretty much used the same. Uh, you pull the safety uh, pin off here, as well as up here, and there will then be a plunger that that you can see. Place the EpiPen onto the patient. Press hard against their thigh. Depress the plunger, and it will. Or, or excuse me. As soon as you press it up against the hard against the patient, it should inject on its own. Excuse me. Uh, if epinephrine is not carried on the EMS unit, it is important to determine whether the patient has more than one injector so that you can take it along and be prepared to deliver a second injection. Dose can be repeated in 5 to 15 minutes if condition does not improve. Patient may complain of a variety of side effects, including pale skin, chest pain, uh, nausea and vomiting, excitability, and anxiousness. So be prepared for these signs or symptoms. All right, guys, that's it for this uh, chapter. Um, always up with any kind of allergic reaction, always make sure that you maintain your ABCs. Um, if you all have any questions, be sure to send me a message either in Remind or in Blackboard, or just simply write it down and get it to me next time we're in class. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Y'all have a good rest of your day.